Yo, what is up, guys? It's Boy One Three Three Jim. Welcome to Monday Night Raw Review. My first Raw review in about how many weeks? It's been a while because I just, I just, uh, I just don't have the patience. I just don't have the time. I just don't care. I'm doing a Raw review. Just watch everyone else do it. You know, I, me doing it, it's not gonna do anything. It's not gonna do anyone justice. I mean, how in the cell was needed after what happened last night. But tonight on Monday Night Raw, well, I was hoping, I, I, I asked myself earlier today, I was like, what is Raw going to do to top Hell in the Cell? Because I gave Hell in the Cell a, a, a thumbs up. Hell in the Cell was a thumbs up show last night. But Monday Night Raw tonight, more of a, a boring, sleep inducing show. Now, I'm not going to criticize or hardly criticize like everyone else would do. Um, I'm just gonna tell you guys what I like on the show and what I don't like. Pros and cons, basically. Um, so I got this, uh, review thing here, uh, westwrestlinginc.com. Thank you very much for all the results. So, yeah, we started off Raw with, um, uh, The Miz in the ring. And, yes, I'm recording this way before the, the show even ended because I just, I'm just gonna watch as I record. So, I don't give a damn. It's 10.51 p.m. right now. I wish it was Thursday. Uh, 11.59. That way, the video game will come out and I'll be playing all night long. <sighs> Just saying. Now, like I said, Ross started with uh, The Miz and uh, Curtis Axel in the ring. Bo Dallas is not there. I guess Bo Dallas is sick or he got hurt. Something. He wasn't there tonight. Uh, th that caught my attention real quick. I was like, where's Bo Dallas? You know, I see Axel. I, I know Maurice is gone because she's pregnant. But wh 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 where's Dallas at? So, Bo Dallas is off TV uh, just for this week, I guess. I uh, have to wait and see what happens. I I don't know how was uh, after what what's been announced on this show. I don't know how or, or what the uh, Miz Taraj is gonna do at TLC, bro. We'll get to that. So Miz goes on this whole charade about the Miz Award, who deserved this, who deserved that. Uh, you know, they like Cesaro and Sheamus did this. Miz don't want to take all the credit. He calls himself the big dog. He calls himself the the guy. And you know, then after that, Cesaro and Sheamus came through, which I actually saw their entrance in the game and magnifique, magnifique. That's all I can say. And it actually took me. Uh, from the video game, for me to go watch Roblox End of the Line, to watch that historic match. Uh, not historic, but I'm just saying that to amp it up. But, you know, uh, Cesaro and Sheamus versus The New Day for the WWE Raw Tag Team Championships at Roblox End of the Line. And that match was great. Cesaro, uh, watching that match makes me uh, realize that Cesaro needs a world title run real quick. Like, seriously, he needs one now. Like, I'm... I just say alright? Go watch Roadblock in on the line, and you will understand why. Um, so yeah, everybody gets a Miz Award. Miz got one. He was gonna give one to his, uh, soon-to-be-born child, you know, and then the big dog, Roman Reigns, comes, Roman Reigns comes out, and he's like, alright, Miz, this is the part where you, where you shut up, alright? And then, I'm just sitting there thinking, Roman, you're talking tough, because you're standing on the stage, Miz, yeah, he's talking tough because he got people behind him and he's all the way in the ring. If y'all were face to face, I guarantee you someone would get them get their face punched. Simple. Um, so they're going back and forth. Miz is like, oh, uh, like I'm sick and tired of this whole, you know, rumor about the shield. You know, it, it, it's it's just it's just like you. You know, it's just it's just it's just garbage. It's just not. It, it's it's just not going to come to light. What people need to worry about is like Miz, Axel, Cesaro, Sheamus, all that stuff, you know? Like Miz just goes on and says about, you know, that he Miz goes on and tells Roman to go get Dean and go get Seth. So then the rumors of the Shield reuniting are exactly what Roman is, nothing but hype. And then uh, Roman Roman was like, you see Miz uh the one thing I don't understand is, uh, rumors. Whoever said that they were rumors. 
And then Ambrose came out. And then that beautiful burn it down came through. And then Rollins came out. They're standing side by side as a cohesive unit. And they marched down to the ring. It was three against four. They did the shield thing. They got in the ring. They assaulted Cesaro, Sheamus, and Axel. Miz got off the ring. And, you know, they got the Miz after they beat up Cesaro, Sheamus, and Axel. They got the Miz. Got him in the ring. Superman holes or the... Or they, they, did, they did, like, Superman punch. They did the, the high knee from Rollins, which I forgot what it's called. Is it the King Slayer? What, what is it called? I, I don't know what it's called, but it's a high knee. It's a high knee move that he does now. Uh, thank God I'd rather have that than the pedigree. Just saying. And and then Ambrose does the dirty deeds on Miz, and then uh, then after that they decide to do the uh, shield bomb as Michael Cole calls it, and I actually like that shield bomb. Some people might find it corny or cringe, but I actually like it. They at least have a name because triple power bomb sounds annoying to me. So so yeah, they hit the the the, the shield bomb onto Miz, and they did the fist bump. Which I found cool. Now, yes, we all know that this is just a uh, a way for Roman to get over. I understand that. I'm, I I understand that completely. But I I I'm not saying I don't enjoy seeing these guys back. Just seeing these guys do what they do before. You do what they did now uh, as they did before. It it just, it just brings me back so much memories of me being like, oh my god, who's going to stop these guys? I thought Cena, Ryback, and, and uh, Sheamus was going to be the ones to put down the shield in 2013. Nope. It took Daniel Bryan, Kane, and Randy Orton to put down the shield. That was, that, that was a good match that day on SmackDown. And that was when SmackDown was taped. So after that whole segment, we had uh, J.C. Joy versus Anderson versus Carl Anderson. I honestly didn't care. I just didn't give a. F I I just I just skipped, skipped. That's all I. That's all I did. And then we get to backstage. Uh, we had Miz in the trainer's room. Kurt Angle's like, "Are uh, you got like any broken bones, torn ligaments? What's going on, Miz? Are, are you good, fam?" And then Miz is like, "No, no, no, broken arm, no, no broken bones, no torn ligaments. What's wrong with you?" You know, and then after that, Miz, the way how he was acting, he was expected that Kurt Angle will do something about uh, what the Shield did to him and everyone else. And Kurt Angle was like, "You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna get, you're gonna get what you want. You want the spotlight. You want the main event where you're gonna get it at WWE TLC in a TLC match. Hmm. It would be you, Cesaro, and Sheamus against the Shield." And I'm thinking, okay, just like how, just like the, when they debuted, you know, uh, at TLC, they had a triple threat in their first match. Their first match debut, they took on Team Hell No and Ryback in a TLC match, which was a historic match, to be honest. That was the first ever TLC match that you could win by pinfall and submission. That was the first one I've ever seen. So, to see that again, and then something else happened, but we're going to get to that. Yeah, then after that, we had Elias. Who wants to walk with Elias? I do, just like everyone else. You know, I'm going to get in line. I'm going to get in line, and I'm going to join Elias, and we go walk while he's strumming his guitar. We're going to walk down the street, and I'm going to say, fuck y'all bitches. <laughs> I got Elias by my side. I'm walking with Elias. And he's singing his song uh, before that. Before he's about to sing his song, rather, we had Titus O'Neil coming out. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> What's going on here? And I'm like, and then I've slowly started to think, is Titus O'Neil getting over? What the, what's going on here? People are actually cheering Titus. Like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, well, what's going on? You know? So he mocks him. He had a banjo. And he's singing he, his voice. I'm, I'm not a good singer myself. I, I don't want to consider I am a, a good singer because if I do, then I'm gonna people be like, yo, you're an awful singer. You see, if you think of, if you think backwards, if you think uh, you're not funny or you're not entertaining or you're not, you know, a good singer, then most likely you are. You know. Now it's something I already. There's something I know I'm not. I'm not good at jokes. I'm not funny. People say I'm funny, but I don't think I'm funny. If you don't think you're funny, that's a good thing because if you think you're funny, then you're gonna get exposed, basically. So Titus comes out singing badly, by the way. 
but it was in a co uh, comedic way. Uh, and he, then uh, he introduced Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews versus Elias again. Uh, Elias defeated Crews as always. One, two, three with the drift away. Grabs his guitar and walks away. We go backstage to Enzo Moore, and I'm starting to warm up with Enzo uh, as Enzo being uh, the Cruiserweight Champion. And I actually like this whole thing as the main event's going on. I actually like the fact that the Cruiserweights are main eventing. Not because, oh, you you know, to show their craft. No, 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 because it's a death hour. It's just nobody gives a fuck about the Cruiserweights anyway. Why not put them in the death hour? Yeah, main event, the, the, death, the, death, the death event. That's what they're called. That's what it's called. The main event on Raw is the death event. So guarantee you, the Cruiserweights is going to main event from now on on Monday Night Raw, including, uh, you know, even if the fact that, that Roman versus Braun in a steel cage is going to happen on the second hour, you know? So got to think about that. So you have Enzo Mori coming out complaining about, you know, the fact that Kalisto got signed to the Cruiserweight division and, you know, he wanted to know if the contract was still in, was still, uh, you know, still a go, basically, because, you know, uh, Enzo had a clause saying that nobody could touch him, no, no contact clause, anyone touches him, they'll lose a Cruiserweight title match and will lose their career. And, or job, rather. And then, uh, Angle said, yeah, I agree, it's just that I, uh, I signed Kalisto after I signed in that paper. So, it doesn't affect Kalisto. It affects everyone else, but it doesn't affect Kalisto, you know? And then Enzo's like, you know, uh, I, I'm, your, I'm your money tree, okay? I'm the best thing going as far as 205 Live is concerned. No, he's not. All right? I'm the one that's bringing the big bucks to you, okay? So, what, so you, what you need to do is make me happy. And I'm not happy, Kurt. And then after that, Kurt Eggert was like, you know what? Fine. You're not happy. All right, I'll try to make you happy. How about this? You will not defend the Cruiserweight title at TLC against Kalisto. And then so it's like, how you doing? He's like, all hype and stuff. And then Kurt Angle's like, yeah, you'll defend the title tonight against Kalisto. And then Enzo's like, all right, all right, all right, fine, all right. On the one condition, though. It's in the main event of Raw. I'm like, oh, Enzo, 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 sad little Enzo. What he doesn't realize is the main event is the death event. Simple, okay? The the third hour is the death hour. That's basically it, all right? So he got what he wanted, and then as Kurt Angle was about to walk backstage, he comes back and says, oh, um, yeah, that whole non no contact clause is going to be uh, none and void for tonight because... Yeah, uh, they're going to be at ringside because it's going to be a uh, Lumberjack match. As, hold on, I'm watching the matchup. And old Mustafa Ali gets involved. I thought Enzo retained the title. I guess not yet. But, yeah. Uh, it'll be a Lumberjack match. Everybody, every Cruiserweight member will be at ringside. So that no contact clause will be, uh, will not have, will not be in full effect tonight. After that, we have, uh, we, uh, we, uh, yeah, they showed us a graphic about the Shield and the Bar and the Miz in a six-man uh, TLC match. Matt Hardy took on Braun Strowman. Oh God! So uh, I, I like was Matt Hardy really wanted to be broken? Like, does he literally want to be broken? Because he can't be. Braun Strowman is the man to do it. Trust me. So he defeats him. Braun Strowman beats Matt Hardy in a uh, little match. You know, Matt Hardy looked like he almost had the win. He almost had Braun Strowman, but. Marity in the end lost to uh, the big man and Braun Strowman. After that, Braun Strowman scooped him up, about to bring him backstage. I don't know what he was going to do with him. And then uh, the shield come out. And I'm like, uh oh, what the hell was going on here? Oh, Selena Del Sol from the top. Hooks the leg. One, two. Kalisto wins the championship. Look at that. And then we got a rematch at TLC. Wow. So yeah, uh, the shield came out. You know what happened. The shield beat up Braun Strowman. Houseway. I don't even know. They, they demolished Braun. They, they didn't demolish him. My bad. They they just assaulted him. That's what they did. Uh, Braun Strowman immediately went after Roman. <laughs> How fitting that he goes after Roman Reigns out of Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. He goes after Roman Reigns. That is hilarious with me. Um, 
You know, you know he they smashed him onto the set, and then after that, uh, they uh, looked at the announce table after after Roman speared him down with a nasty spear. That was a massive spear. I like that spear that Roman did to Braun. A good spear by Roman. And after that, went to the announce table. Uh, you know, they, they you know they took it off. They took off the the, the shit off the announce table. Then they put him through the table, basically. Shield bomb. The uh, goes Strowman through the table. Wow, that that was like whoa. I've never seen Braun Strowman like that, you know. It's the same thing like Brock Lesnar back at SummerSlam. We never seen we never seen anyone do that to Brock Lesnar. Just saying. So after that, um, uh, I didn't see this. I went to go get a bowl of cereal because it was commercial break. I guess commercial break goes on way too quick for me at least. Uh, they the Shield said something. Uh, Seth says they are back and stronger than ever. Ambrose said they'll do. What they do best. Walk over their enemies and destroy what's in their path. Roman says they will take on anyone if they have to. Rain says if you step up, you need to know this. There are three workhorses that run WWE now. Rollins says, and you can believe that. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. The Shield beat up Braun Strowman. Not even Brock. Not even, Brock Lesnar is the Shield by himself. Let's be real. And he couldn't even do what what the Shield did. Just saying. He escaped the the the, the monster that uh the beast. He didn't you know he he didn't like you know went in there and beat him up. No, he he, he escaped. He survived the monster at no mercy. Just saying. After that, we have no mercy. Yeah, oh, no mercy. <laughs> we have Mick, uh, Mickey James coming out. You know the girl that WWE said that she was fat, even though they don't know what the meaning is fat. You know they don't know the meaning of fat. Just saying. Yeah, look at me. Look at her. You'll get the definition of fat. Just saying. So she's in the ring. Uh, I guess she. Uh, uh, I guess she uh, had a sudden accent. I kind of caught it when she was talking. Uh, I didn't really see much of her promo. All I saw was that she is talking about how Bliss bringing up how she's old and, you know, this and that. And then she starts talking about how, you know, you could come out here, face me like a woman. You know, I'm all woman, you know. Uh, you need to do, what you need to do is pick up and put on your big girl pants and, uh, you know, come down here and face me, you know. And then Bliss came out. Uh, and uh, also Mickey brought up about Bliss's cheap hair extension and pink hair dye. And age is nothing but a number. And the only number that she cares about is the number seven uh, for the Women's Championship at the uh, TLC pay-per-view. Becoming a seven-time Women's Champion. Tying with uh, Trish Stratus with, uh, as far as seven championship goes. I think Trish Stratus uh, is, the, is the, the most reigned or has... Won the most women's championships in WWE. I could be wrong, but I think I think it's her. So yeah, Bliss comes out. Bliss uh, just making jokes, saying about her wrinkles, showing a video package about you know how Mickey you know was in WWE years years ago. Like it's like she tried to portray that Mickey James is that old, where they had the old like uh, golden era. The golden age era WWE logo, you know, like like in like the Hogan era, like that, like that old, like that's what she tried to do in that video package, and she's like, look, uh, I'll just send you a VHS tape, you know. I was like, what? <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm not laughing. I'm just sitting there like, okay, this is funny. I'm not laughing funny, but this is like, oh, okay, I get what you did there. Uh, okay, that's like, that was more like acceptable funny, you know? And after that, just calling her old lady, you know, even though she's like in her late 30s. How the fuck is in her late 30s old? I don't I don't understand that. I, I, I just don't. Like I said before, if you're in, if you're, at the age of 80 up, that's old to me. I don't give a damn what anyone says. So, she basically provokes Mickey saying, uh, I'll come down to the ring and let's do this now. She gets to the ring. She's like, yeah, just like you, that trick is old or that saying is old. She walks away. Mickey got her. They start brawling. And then 
uh, Bliss got away. Suppose that. And after that, the announcement about the Oscar debut at TLC, and then Kurt Angle's backstage. We see uh, Bailey, who was freaking cringe to be honest, uh, and Sasha Banks, who's a bit cringe as well. You know, talking about, oh, they should be the one to face Asuka. How about the Bass versus Asuka? How about, how about me, Bailey? Give her a hug and then a baby belly, you know? And then, and then Alicia Fox getting in there, being all crazy. Yelling and shit about her, her not having a t-shirt. Who want to buy merchandise from you anyway? Damn. You know, and then, and then she's like, bring, bring it up how, you know, her look at her... Uh, credentials, look at her accomplishments. You only won one championship, and you haven't touched the championship since 2010 for seven, six, seven years. Seven years, bro. Okay? Re remember that. All right? I was, I was in elementary school when you were Divas champion, and now I'm in college! Holy shit. Oh, my God. And now, and then after that, uh, what? Uh, Emma came through and said it should be hashtag Emma versus Oscar. And then Dana Brooke coming out of nowhere where uh, I don't know what, a f what the hell did Dana Brooke come through, but she came through. And then Kurt Angle's like, we're gonna settle this. We're gonna settle this in the ring. Fatal Five Way again. Winner faces Oscar at TLC. Uh... Yeah, and then we had a cruiserweight match. I don't give a fuck. Uh, just skip. Well, we had Kendrick and Gallagher win. Suppose that. Do you know we had the same problem with this Finn Balor Bray Wyatt crap for on um, Monday Night Raw as far as far as that goes. Like on um, pay per view when they have matches, it's it's okay. But when on Raw, when it comes to cutting promos, it's the same formula. Have you noticed that? I noticed that real quick. Balor comes out, cut a promo on Bray Wyatt, right? And then Bray Wyatt's on the Tron, and he's cutting a promo. And that's it. Nothing happens after that. After Bray Wyatt cuts his promo, it fades to black. Nothing happens. So it's like, rinse and repeat? Really? Come on, man. Yeah, but this time we had uh, Bray Wyatt being uh, Sister Abigail. Uh, and then he just starts laughing, and then fades to black. I... Huh. I literally skipped this match, this Fatal 5-Way match. I didn't know it was elimination until I saw, uh, I think it was Bailey that got eliminated by Emma, or at least a Fox, rather. And I'm like, wait, it's elimination? Oh, my God. I literally thought Alicia Fox won. I was like, oh, Alicia Fox won, okay. And then, no, 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 no. Elimination match. Good grief. Idian, Emma won, done deal. Yeah, Renee Young interviewed Battler backstage. I did not give a fuck. Simple as that. And then Charlie Thick, Charlie Caruso interviews Kalisto. Talking about that he's, uh, you know, when he was a kid, you know, Eddie Guerrero, who was his birthday today. Happy birthday, Eddie. Rest in peace, though. Hey, uh, you know, guys like Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio, you know, made him who he is now, you know. Made, gave him the the courage or whatever he said to to make him become a WWE superstar. And when Enzo won the championship, it this he basically disrespected him, the cruiserweights, the WWE universe, Eddie, Rey Mysterio, etc. Right? And then yeah, he then he said uh, he said he said that you know what he what he does tonight. He hopes that Ray and Eddie would be proud of him winning the Cruiserweight title. And he did. I just saw it moments ago. So that is Monday Night Raw review. Oh, my God. I'm really tired. I'm tired. I don't know if I'm going to work tomorrow. If I'm not going to work, I'm just going to go to the bank, cash out my check, go to the nearest store, get PlayStation Store cards, buy the game, and then let it download. I have not touched my PS4 controller in a week. That is a problem. Because I never ever done that in my life. In my life, I always play my my latest system. PS4 is the latest system I have, right? So I always be playing it every time, any chance I get. But now, since I'm waiting for 2K18, I haven't touched it, bro. Since I finished recording uh, Nine of Champions, which you guys can go watch, you know, links in the description or an annotation in the video because, you know, I uploaded it yesterday. Wink, wink. Um, after that, after recording Nine of Champions, I have nothing to do. Nothing to do. That's why I've been going to work lately because I have nothing to do. Normally, I'll record and then go to sleep, relax, chill. No. N like, now, 
I have nothing to do. That's why I'm doing this review. Because I have nothing to do. Nothing to do. So I'm like, you know what? Whatever. So 2K18 will be coming out this Friday. Just just gotta let Tuesday go by, Wednesday go by, and then when it hits Thursday, the second it hits Thursday, 11.59 p.m. Lord, thank you. I can't wait. Whew, so that is about it, I robbed. Uh, well, what was the good part? Uh, Kalisto winning the championship from Enzo Mori. Enzo Mori's segment with Kurt Angle. Uh, Braun Strowman and The Shield. The Shield was the highlight of the show, no doubt. And... Is that, is that, is that, uh, and Elias Sampson and Tyler Sunil. That was the only good parts about the show. Everything else, Jordan versus Anderson, the women's match, you know, um, Matt, uh, even Matt Hardy and Braun Strowman, that was good too. But uh, And the women's segment between Mickey James and uh, Alexa Bliss. But the Cruiserweight match, Jordan and, and Anderson, uh, the women's uh, Fatal 5 way match, I don't give a fuck. Simple was that, and Bray Wyatt and 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 Finn Balor. Only good thing about that that whole segment was uh, Bray Wyatt's sister Abigail in, in, uh, impersonation or, or whatever. But yeah, that's it. So uh, more, I think more low, more uh, more cons than pros. I guess I I don't know. I I just I'm tired. <laughs> Leave your comments down below. What do you guys think about that Raw tonight? If you liked it, then tell me you liked it. If you hated it, then tell me you hated it. I don't, you know, just tell me how you feel about Monday Night Raw. I feel like it was a boring show overall. So, leave a like, subscribe. There were some good moments, but in the end, overall, it's a show. Uh, easily forgettable, you know, like as a full show, easily forgettable. So, yeah, like, subscribe. Thank you guys for watching WWE 2K18. This Friday morning, you know, uh, you know, at 12 p.m. midnight, from midnight to 2 o'clock, you should expect a gameplay from your boy. So, yeah, leave a like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Boy123Gym. Check out Night of Champions and all videos from about Hell in the Cell last night. You know, check all that out on my channel, and I'll see you all next time. And I am out. Later.